Uh, welcome to the uh, Resource Management Committee meeting. First order of businesses, I'd like you to stand and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Roll call. Mr. Curran. Here. Mr. Sear. Here. Mr. Barnes. Mr. Fanton. Here. Mrs. Hanchett. Here. Mrs. Ricketts Wales. Here. Mr. Stockin. Here. Five present, one absent. Okay. Now let's have the approval of minutes of April 20th, 2022. I'll ask for a motion. Fanton. Moves, second. Ricketts Wales. Ricketts Wales, seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Carried. Okay, Mr. Brack, first on the line. Good afternoon. Hey. Any questions? <laughs> I have one for you then. Uh, my, you saw my trivia. Uh, in central New York State, there are many cities, towns, villages, and hamlets named after famous people, locations, events, and mythological characters from ancient Greek and Roman history. This trend extended into our area a little bit, and we have two such locales in Allegheny County and one in Potter County. What are those names? Can anybody come up with it? That's a, that, you're a few months down the road on that one. First one is in the town of Allen, barely into Allen from the town of Angelica on County Road 15. It's called Aristotle. It's where Dorothy Chafee's homestead is located. Uh, there's all of uh, two structures, maybe three structures that are left now. And Aristotle was an ancient Greek philosopher. Uh, the one in Potter County, Pennsylvania is Ulysses, named after uh, the hero of Homer's <coughs> book, The Odyssey. And the one in Allegheny County, that's a, the largest of, the th of them, possibly the largest, uh, well known. You all have driven through it many, many times, especially if you drive from Bolivar to Portville on 417. You go from Bolivar to Little Genesee into the hamlet of Ceres, the Roman goddess of agriculture, and the root word for what you had for breakfast this morning, a breakfast cereal. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. <laughs> okay. Now we're all educated on mm -hmm. our communities. Uh, Mr. Torrey. Scott Torrey, Soil and Water. Um, you have my report in there. Uh, one thing to add is we are starting another manure storage project, I believe the first of next week, <coughs> in Friendship. And we had a new employee start this week. Um, she graduated from SUNY ESF last week and started Monday. Um, she has a lot of forestry background, so she's going to be helping with the county forest. Great. Yeah. So they're not. Any, anyone have any direct questions for Mr. Torrey? I have one. Uh, had any luck finding any money for that creek rehab down in Almond? Uh, we're looking, but it's going to take some time. Yeah. Okay. Um, it'd probably be another year before we'd come up with something for that if we could. Okay. I hope it doesn't rain hard. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Nothing, Gary? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. And Allison Caro, county attorney, has some requests. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi. The first request that I have 
is a request for a resolution to designate Allegheny County as the lead agency responsible for the environmental quality review, a seeker of the eight year review of the agri agricultural district number two um, and his proposed modifications and continuation, which is pursuant to New York State Agricultural Markets Law, sections 303A and 303B, and Article 8 of the New York State Environmental Conservation Law. So whenever modifications are requested to be made to an agricultural district, New York State Environmental Conservation Law requires that an environmental assessment be conducted, and a state or local agency must be designated as the lead agency and be responsible to perform the seeker review. I would also add that our office has sent out requests to the local municipalities who are involved, who are contained in um, the agricultural district number two, um, and have asked and have stated to them that we are proposing to be the lead agency, and have asked them to sign off on consenting to a uh, Allegheny County being the lead agency. We have received some of those. Um, requests back signed. We will follow up with those municipalities we have not heard from as we get closer to the date um, of the board meeting of June 8th if the, um, and the time for this resolution. Question, uh, could a single town or village stall something like this? Uh, yes, they could. Uh, they could state that they would not want us to be lead agency, um, and then there is a process by which we would have to um, go through to make that determination. Um, however, if that occurs, then there are factors that need to be considered, um, right. and, and it could stall it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can I ask for a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. Hanchett seconds. Hanchett seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's carried. The next request that I have before this community this afternoon is a resolution requesting Allegheny County um, as designated as the lead agency to accept, to accept the seeker pertaining to the eight-year review of Agricultural District number two and its proposed modifications and continuation pursuant to 6 NYCRR um, part 617. So Allegheny County has conducted an environmental review by examining the seeker short environmental assessment form and determine a copy of which is contained in your committee packet this afternoon. A determination was made that the action constituted an unlisted action for the purposes of seeker. Uh, New York State um, Environmental Conservation Law states that if an ag district is modified, consolidated, or terminated, um, at this time a request is being made that it be continued with modifications, um, that upon its review, then the modification would be deemed an unlisted action. Um, the, ter the determination is also being made that the proposed modifications in continuation do not create any significant environmental impact because the action entails no physical change or any anticipated change to the land or to the environment. And that will have to be passed by resolution by this board. Fan moves, second. Ricketts Swales. Ricketts Swales seconds. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That is carried. And the last uh, last matter that I have before this committee this afternoon is a resolution, a uh, request for a resolution um, to continue the agricultural district number two with modifications pursuant to New York State Agriculture and Market Law sections 303A and 303B. Agriculture districts are reviewed every eight years to consider a modification and continuation of the district. The review process will be completed on June 8, 2022, and this resolution is requested to modify the existing agricultural district number two to include an additional 2,727 acres of predominantly viable agricultural land, which is being requested by landowners. The anniversary date for agricultural district number two is June 10th, 2022, and the entire statutory process must be completed prior to that date. I will also note that we have already completed um, the public hearing which is required to this process, and that was done on March 23rd, 2022. So these are the final steps that we need to complete um, before we send our um, final packet of information to the Commissioner of Agricultural 
and ag and markets um, for their review and approval. Okay. I have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion on that. Mr. <coughs> and second? Um, Barnes, second? Any discussion? I, I would like to say something. I remember reaching out to Scott about this too, trying to learn how the District 2 and, uh, not District 2, but Agriculture 2 is done. And just to make it clear for anybody who's listening or those that don't know, as I didn't, it, this is done by request of landowners, the changes that are made. It's not um, done by any outside agency or anything. So I wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have a resolution in front of us in support of maintaining a 60-hour work week for farm workers and recommending stopping the implementation of a reduction in the farm labor overtime threshold. Uh, and I will ask for a motion. I'll make the motion. <coughs> Mr. Barnes, second. Rick at Swales. Rick at second. Any discussion on this? Go right ahead. I yep. Um, I'm pretty aware of this because both of my children work in agriculture. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm aware of this law only because both my children work in agriculture. And I think that while I think a fair wage is right, I also think that this will hurt the farmers who then will take it out on their workers. So to me, this is a a good way to continue getting this work done. Um, anything over 60 hours is then over time, but this is, is a good way to proceed for this county. I'm in agreement with that. Anyone else? Mr. Harris. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just wanted to thank the committee for taking up this resolution. Give a little background. This came as a request from an inter-county member uh, from Genesee County. Um, uh, Genesee County has passed a similar resolution as of other counties. This, act, this also was part of NYSAC's uh, legislative priorities from the last conference um, that passed through their Ag and Rural Affairs subcommittee. Um, just a point to Ms. Rickett Swales' comments, which are true and accurate. Um, it, it should be pointed out that a lot of the farm laborers themselves are opposed to this this drop to 40 hours mm -hmm. because it forces the, the the farm owners to cut hours and the and the laborers don't want their hours cut so thank you mr. chairman I just want to thank legislator Harris he worked very hard on this and, and did a great job thank you thank you okay any any other discussion Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That is carried. Okay. <clears throat> Youth Bureau. Brian. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you do have my report, so I'll hit just a, a couple things on there, probably not try to hit all of them. Uh, the big one to note is last month I was mentioning that there was uh, a proposed or maybe it was a couple months ago actually uh, they were looking at a proposal of changing that calendar year for OCFS for things uh, it did meet some some opposition from all the well a majority of the the youth bureaus county youth bureaus and, th and such uh, nonetheless they did move forward with it but they did postpone when they're going to implement it they were looking at implementing it this year um, now it won't go into effect until fiscal year 23 24 so Got a little time to adapt and prepare for that. Um, they've assured that funding isn't going to be interrupted while they do that. Um, uh, bike safety program that I, I had mentioned in, in my update, uh, there was still several schools I hadn't heard back from over the past week since that got sent. Uh, did hear back from a bunch more. So we're actually um, sitting pretty good there. We got 11 schools now scheduled that I'll be into starting next week and going into June. So we'll make uh, plenty of appearances there and there's a couple that we might still hear back from. So that turned out pretty good. Good. Um, I'll 
cross over into that stop DWI a little bit, um, just because I do like to point out when both of those sides of my job come together, and we did a couple uh, stop DWI DWI crash drills last week, one for Friendship, one for Andover and Whitesville, and then I also made an appearance at Genesee Valley uh, with a victim impact panel with the help of uh, Jeff Lucky and Ann Weaver from ACASA. So those events went well. It's good to get back in the school, get in front, um, get that, uh, I guess, a little feeling of, of purpose again. Um, there's been a lull in a lot of that activity, so it's been it's been an interesting couple years for me to figure out where things are sitting, but definitely good to be back in there and doing those kinds of things. Um, and then the last thing that happened kind of after this, and I just want to bring up, was another opportunity um, that I got a phone call from an organization in Massachusetts. Um, Good Sports was the name of the organization, but they, they were a part of the Ralph C. Wilson Foundation grants that have come out, and they offer um, equipment for local youth uh, sports programs. Um, they can even reach into after-school programs and such. Um, they've got a stock that they can you know, readily ship out to anyone if they need it. Um, they have uh, also access, because of that grant now, to be able to request and order more stuff and ship it directly too. So uh, I figured this was a good avenue of, of it's, information's getting out. I kind of sent some things to, to Cure's office, planning and development a little bit, um, and we'll get some, some more information out. But if any local organizations are out there that anyone knows of, um, that are in need of, of youth athletic equipment, um, you know, send them my way. Send, you know, we'll, we'll make sure the information is getting out there to those groups. And we've already started that a little bit, but definitely a good opportunity. So, what was the name? Uh, good Sports, I believe, was the name of, of the, the company that's in charge of that. I do have their contact and information and everything back at, back at the office. So, very good. Okay. And that's all I've got. Uh, Brian, a question. Yeah. Why, what are they looking to change the fiscal year or the timing? Um, so the, the reasoning we were given for it was that it's going to line up better with budget planning for their part. Um, and there's another programs that kind of deal with youth and they're trying to get everything to kind of line up um, is, is kind of the way. So we've been told that it will make it so that those allocations that we're all typically waiting on, and I, and I just received last month, so I didn't get a chance to divvy those out to the other groups. You'll see those coming to you next month. Um, but when uh, those allocations should, because we're moving the fiscal year forward, those should start getting to us sooner so that everyone's got their plan ahead of time instead of waiting until you know, May, June to be able to tell these summer programs what they're going to be able to spend in the summer. So there's some good logic behind it. Um, it's the, the, the follow through and, and how it's going to happen, I think, that a lot of youth bureaus were, were had concerns for. Okay. So, Any other questions for Brian? Okay. I don't see any. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is Laura not here? Laura Hunsberger from Cooper or Cornell Cooperative Extension has quite a lot of material here for us, so gives us some good reading. And any old business? New business? Go to the order. I'll ask for adjournment. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we adjourn. Mr. Sear, Mr. Barnes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, there you go. Nice. Yep.